Hi Planets New, this is Tailspin. In this video I'm going to model some ways to find homeworlds on turn one. Now I recently wrote a Planets Magazine article about this, so this is just the visual model of the same thing. This is a standard 11 player game on just a regular, normal, rectangular map. So there's my homeworld there. The first method is the Pi method. So to do that, the first part of it, you're going to put find the center of the map. Now you can calculate that out. I just sort of make a uh, guess. And then I put from that point, I put a circle around it that's 825 light years. That is just a number off the top of my head, which I find gives you a general guideline of where homeworlds are. So somewhere along this, inside or outside, you're going to find all the homeworlds because the computer puts them generally in a circle. So from there you're going to look at the clusters and the clusters are their connections. You can see the dot 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 that shows you this is a warp 9 jump or 81.5 light years apart and it, it tells you if you cross here it's going to take you two light years, here it's one light years. So this creates shape to the map and tells you this is my cluster there's probably a cluster here, 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 there's a big one there, one there, 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 uh, probably there, and back to me. So I've already done that here, and I've used the red shapes to show the clusters. And so my neighbor up here, I thought this one was a little too far in, close to the center, so I thought maybe he's in that little one. And then there's someone in here, someone out there, someone in this big one. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so when you find ten, you find, okay, well, I'm missing one, so there's probably another one here that I didn't include. Or maybe here, that could be one too, which is probably most likely. Uh, the two yellow circles, I thought that if there's a homeworld out here, there could be one in here. Or if there's one here, it could be out there. So it sort of goes in and back out. Uh, the green circles, I thought this big one was pretty big, so it's possible that two homeworlds are there. And I thought maybe, well, there's a cluster here, so... Maybe there's a homeworld, but this is unlikely because usually you don't find homeworlds in the corners of a rectangular map. So that is the part one of the pie method, finding the clusters. And part two is dividing it into slices. So again, you can calculate this out and divide it into 11, 11 sections. I got one all the way around to 11. And you can see that each section ha includes the the clusters that I already highlighted in red, uh, except down here, so that's probably throwing that off a little bit, but and but it gives you an idea of, you know, this guy if he has a if his homeworld's in here, he this is the planets he has access to. This is how he can enter the center. He's got these free planets out here. It tells you if there's a guy here and here, they're probably gonna have to fight over this cluster. It can can sort of give you a narrative of how the game will play out. This one here, if there's if there's somebody here and here, chances of them getting in the middle is pretty sparse. It's pretty hard for them to cross all that. There's like no little clusters there. That's not a good spot for them. I don't want to be over here. Look at it. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. But anyway, um, so that's the pie method of finding homeworlds. I don't use this. Some people do, maybe if you calculate it out better, it works better. What I use is the three rings or the three circles. And so I use my home world as a reference point because that's reliable. I know that's a point. And I draw a circle that's 81 light years, 162, and 431 around my home world. Now I use 431 because and that's a number I got from Glenn, although I think he uses 437 and I sort of morphed it to 431 because generally homeworlds are anywhere from 425 to 525 apart 
It's a good guess to try 4.30 to 5, 4.30 to 4.50. Um, it's generally a good distance, but I use 431, and I test planets along this 431 line to see which ones are homeworlds. So I would probably test here, and I would probably test here. If we go back and look at my cluster selections, that is the cluster I chose there, and... I thought maybe that one, but this one's closer to the line, so I'm going to test this one first. So if I test this planet here, I draw a circle, 81 light year radius, 162 light year radius, and I count the planets inside. Well, let's go back to my planet, my home planet first. I count this circle here, the white one, the 81 light year radius, represents the setting of very close planets. And if you go to your game's page and you go to the host detailed settings, you can find the setting that is very close planets. And it's usually three. It's small, almost always three. And this other one between the white and the blue, this ring out here, represents the close planet setting. So in here you're going to count three planets within this distance. One, two, three. And out here you're going to count. I know for this game the setting is 10. For other games it might be 12. And sometimes planets outside the circle sort of sneak in. So if it's 10, it's a minimum of 10. So it could be 11 or 12 or 13. But generally your, your minimum is going to be 10. And so I got 1, 2, 3 in the middle. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 out here. So my home world exactly fits the host settings of three very close and ten close planets. Since it's so perfect, it means if anybody who knows this trick, I guess, they can calculate my homeworld pretty easily and find it almost perfectly. So, at 431 light years, I'm trying this planet here. And I drew an 81 light year radius, and I drew a four or sorry 162 light year radius and I'm test I'm counting the, the planets one two that one there is difficult to tell because it's on the line so if I use the measure tool it is 81.3 so I would still count that one as being in the middle in the 81 or as a very close planet because it is below 81.5 Now, I'm not entirely certain on that, but generally, generally I find that it goes up to 81.5. And then I count out here in this ring, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And that one there, if I measure again, is 164.4. So it is above 162.5. So it's probably not going to be counted. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this planet does not fit the minimum of three and ten. So I probably would discount that one. And I keep saying probably because it's not a science. It, you know, the computer does try to mix it up. So let's try this planet over here. Do the same thing in the two circles and count. One, two. It only has two in the middle, so I can immediately discount that one. It's got to have three connected to it. And then we try this one. It has one, two, three, four. It's a minimum of three, so four is possible. So this could be it, but let's count the second ring. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It only has seven if we count maybe this one, eight. It doesn't have enough in the second ring to count as a home world to fit those host settings. So I looked at those three and I thought, okay, well they're not really working, but maybe it is possible that he's in this little cluster here. Because I thought, that's where my red circle was. So I thought maybe let's test out one of these to see if they work. Generally you don't find people in these three cluster groups, but I have, I have been in a four cluster 
homeworld cluster. So anyway, this one has six, so he's not terrible. He's not off. He's not a horrible, horrible start. But. Okay, so we're going to test this planet, North D. We're going to put the two circles and count. So he's got one, two, three in here. There's homeworld plus three planets. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This one's on the line, so let's just double check that one. It is at 160.5, so it is below 162, so that is definitely counted in this ring. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this one here is perfect. It fits the host settings of three very close and ten close planets. So I think that that is his home world. Now if you wanted to be extra careful, you could calculate out this one, this one, more in here, more in here. You could try all the planets. You might narrow it down to two or three. Depends on how accurate you really want to be with that. And then I put 431 around this one, and I can probably guess this guy's home world is going to be somewhere along here. And I can go and I can test those ones and find those ones out. Once you start verifying too, once you know exactly if you've had a scan or whatever or shared intel and you know exactly where homeworlds are, like say you get a shared intel of someone over here, well then you can start calculating homeworlds over here. So that is how you do the ring method. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the turn. I already did actually. I didn't know at first, but then I ran it. I had to do the video like three times, so it's already been ran. But anyway, so I didn't know at first, and so I ran the turn. Let's look. So that's my home world. That's the 431. So there were none in there. It is off of the circle a little bit, but that's okay. This is just to give us a guide. And we pinpointed that home world exactly through this method. And... Then 431 from him, you can see this one is, that homeworld is directly on the 431 line. So we would have, if we had used a, the, a, the ring method, used 81 light years, 162, we would have found that fits with the host settings. All right, so that is how you use those methods. I'm not going to get into the bloodhound method of counting IDs and ship IDs and planet IDs and because usually people stay hidden. Uh, I do use that bloodhound method to find secondary star bases. If I see a ship out there, then I'm like, okay, that's definitely from a second star base. So I can count it back and trail it back to where the secondary star base is. But that is viable. Um, I don't use it because I, I find this one's pretty accurate. This one can be thrown off. The bloodhound might work better in games where there's a big star cluster here, and it, and it shunts the home worlds in different directions, so it throws it off. Or a nebula covers this whole area, and you can't even see the planets, so that throws off your calculations. And maybe if the map is different size or different shape. Uh, this usually works with with regular and round maps as well, but there are things that can throw it off, and it's not exact. But, you know, if it is a map like I have here, this, as you saw, like I was able to pinpoint that home world exactly. And so if I wanted, I could have built a warship right away and sent it directly to that home world. And what, four turns, five turns later, I'd be attacking it. Okay, so that is some methods for finding home worlds. I hope it helped. And take care.